Pixavert now offers a range of courses in generative AI, including a beginner's guide to stable diffusion and other courses in generative AI, including SDXL and Comfy UI. If you're interested, use the link in the description to enroll and get started on a new direction. So in this video, we'll talk about checkpoint mergers. This is model merging inside of Comfy UI. Comfy UI has a lot of features that allow us to do model merging. And this is a fairly complex workflow. We have a testing area. We also have a merge area and we've got a selection area where we select checkpoints and the VAE. So if you've watched some of my other videos on model merging, you will know exactly what we're dealing with. We're dealing here with model merging and testing, but we are dealing here specifically with model block merge, which is allowing us to merge very specifically different blocks in different ratios. So this is one for the more advanced users. Uh, there are much simpler workflows for model merging. If you are someone who's just starting out and I wouldn't recommend this particular technique if you are someone who's a bit of a newbie. So we'll take a look, uh, we'll do a very quick tour of what we're seeing here. We've got the model uh, title there, we've got the checkpoints, and here you can select different checkpoints for your outputs. The, the main checkpoint is called R1A, R1B is the second one, and R2 is the third one. And what we do is that we choose our VAE here, now, model R1A comes in as model 1, model R1B comes in as model 2, and then the output from this one comes to this guy here, model R2. Uh, and this bad boy is just going to take the uh, input from the third model, so that's going to be this guy here. And we'll take the output from that one, connect it here, and then we'll put in different ratios for this different uh, merge block here. So the output from here will go to a save checkpoint, which is going to be by default muted and to also a case sampler. And the case sampler will be very familiar to you. It just allows you to actually just work with the testing. So the testing is here set to batch size of four. We can see the four outputs here. You're going to be changing settings mainly in terms of which checkpoints you're using and also in terms of the, the ratios. So here we have a render that's using three checkpoints and the ratios are sort of like the, the, the 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 ratios. What we're looking at is an output which has a lot of color. The models, all female models, blonde hair, lots of architecture. I've really tried to use the prompting to test the things that I want to test, which is the architecture, the, the colors, the realism, the photorealism, how did the female models look, prompt is beautiful architecture, we've got ancient princess, futuristic city, this is the creative part, bokeh, that gives us some photographic detail, and we've got blonde hair, photorealistic. Now the blonde hair in some situations will give you this kind of outcome where you don't just have blonde hair, but everything is turning kind of the same color as the as, as the blonde. So what we do here, and I've already done it, we've gone ahead and changed the ratios. We can actually see what the results are because I've already run it. So this these are the results with those ratios. With a newer setting of ratios, we get a different result. And there it is. You can see we have much better color separation. We have, I would say, somewhat more realistic looking models, some somewhat more realistic looking females. The architecture, I think, is somewhat drab, uninteresting. The colors are good. So we've moved forward in some areas, we've moved backwards in some areas. I would want to save this. So what would we do if I wanted to save this? This looks to me interesting. We would come here, control M to unmute. And then we would just basically run the prompt again. And what that would do that time around, it would just save the checkpoint. And the checkpoint here is saving to an area on my, it's one of my drives, which has a huge amount of space. This is where I save diffusions that I create. I save them to a large hard drive, it's a slow hard drive. So they get the name, you can change the name to whatever you want to, to, to have. And this will only save when you ask it to save. So most of the time you want to keep this inactive. And uh, so most of the time it's going to be switched off. 
the checkpoints you can create sometimes are fairly large and you don't want to be saving these huge checkpoints each and every time. So only when you've got a result that looks interesting, you would say, okay, I like this result. Let me save this one. And then afterwards, you can really start doing your, your hardcore testing. These are the new ratios. These different ratios gave me the results that we got. And as long as I'm getting fairly consistent results with the with different ratios, if I hit the run, the, the, the Q uh, button with the with a different number, we should see what sort of results I'm getting. Am I getting the same kind of consistent results in terms of color, in terms of color contrast, in terms of realism, in terms of architecture? Okay, once again, architecture that I'm not very happy with the, 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 the female models, they kind of look okay. I, I, I like the color separation. So I'm getting consistent results. That means I've got something that actually means something. It's not just random chance that I got a particular outcome. I would then say, let me save this. This is something I can test again in future. There are simpler workflows. This one is really for the guys who want to have something that gives more control. Now, I do know that there are far more complex ways of actually doing model merges. There are other uh, much more complicated. Let's do a search. This one here, for instance, model merge block number that, that gives you a very complex uh, situation that you, you, you can work with. So you can get more complex than this, but this is a pretty decent one if you want to check the results that you get with different checkpoints, different ratios, and you really want to finesse the results that you're getting in terms of the, the images that you're creating. Now, as well as doing this, we can also add a LoRa file and I can very quickly show you what that looks like. So here we've added a LoRa file and we can actually output the new model with the LoRa file actually attached to it. So the LoRa file here is creating this kind of modern looking fairly dark, fairly austere, but pretty interesting results. And what we have to produce that is basically a LoRa and that LoRa is attached right at the bottom there. Uh, and then we're outputting to the checkpoint and we're also outputting to the case sampler from that, from that LoRa file. So that's another way of working. You then end up with this particular LoRa, whatever you've chosen, embedded within the, the new checkpoint. So it's something that you wanna use maybe occasionally when you want to completely embed uh, a LoRa inside a checkpoint. 